Okay, hey everyone. Welcome to Barrio HQ, live from Helsinki. Today we have a session of Art of Virtual Flying, and I have a very, very special guest here with me. Steven, welcome to Barrio. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here today. I mean, I've just had the most amazing time here. So yeah, it's, it's and, great to be here. And, and we are super excited. This is the first time that we actually have uh, anyone from our community I know, visiting yeah, us see. here live. Yeah, it's literally and, amazing. Yeah. And, and, and we are super stoked that it's you because, um, because you've been a big part of, of the story of Barrio Aero. And uh, and we are big fans of the things that you are doing. So thank you. So it's 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 really great to have you here today. Um, so uh, short introductions first, I guess, are in place. So I'm Jussi Mackin, I'm chief brand officer. Uh, unfortunately, Urho couldn't be here uh, with us today, but uh, but that won't slow us down uh, definitely. And like I said, Steve, aka many of you might know him better as uh, the VR flight sim guy. So um, again. Yeah, maybe short introduction. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm just laughing when you said VR flight sim guy because yeah. that I remember when I named my channel that you know it was sort of just a bit of a placeholder, but it just stuck and it's been that ever since really. But um, yeah, it's 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 incredible how the channel has been built up to the point where we're here doing this, and um, I think it never was my intention to have a YouTube channel that sort of grew so much, but I think there's so many people out there like me that really value that experience of flying and getting it as close to that experience as you possibly can and it's been something that i've always wanted to happen for such a long time now yeah. you know and ever since i was a kid like aviation has been such a huge part of, of of me and and sort of i remember when i went to my first ever air show you know yeah. and, and i think it was the red arrows or something i was like seven years old i think there's some sort of moment in me that changed forever and when i had my first flight real flight just as soon as I was up in the air, I just thought this is where I wanted to be. I love flying so much, and but it's quite difficult to be a real world pilot, of course, and to have all those qualifications and the expense. So I've always been thirsty to try and find a way of flying um, mm. that could be so authentic, but yet you could do it in the safety of your own home. And of yeah. course, flight simulation has always been around yeah. forty years or more now, like mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. But um, absolutely, it's just got more and more incredible as time's gone on yeah really. yeah definitely and and you know if i think about myself as a i i've never been a big flight sim fan back in the day when it was only 2d screens right yeah but 2D. the moment oh. you you know put the headset <laughs> on and you're in a microsoft flight sim in in in, in top of tokyo like you're like you know, I could do this. I could yeah, do this yeah. all day, this all day. So, every day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's um, it's a, uh, it's it's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a super interesting topic and a use case. And uh, and uh, let's go today in this session. You know, deeply into that one. How you yeah, became part of that. How you know, Vario became part of that. And uh, and and this is truly about the kind of like the as we call it the community session. So please, please ask us questions. Uh, there is um, submit in the Q and A tool. So in the Zoom, so just you know, look for that icon and and let us know your questions, and we will be both both and answering those at the end of end of the session. Um, maybe we start uh, with a short video. You can see in the back uh, there's a yeah, motion exactly. platform <laughs> with a nice slogan: "Rise Beyond Reality." So that's a motion platform that we have here in our Mario Atrium. So as you can see. Uh, the uh, virtual flying is a big part of, of what we do here, at least every Friday after after all the meetings are done. And, um, and you know, it's it's one of the best things ever. So we actually recorded a short video uh, yes. of, of you <laughs> trying it out yesterday for the first, for the time. first time. So let's let's see that video. All right, I'll step in and here we go. This is it. <laughs> right, this is the best way to do this. And I feel like I'm getting into a real aircraft. This is so cool. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this is great. I'm already smiling my head off. I haven't even tried it yet. Trip, yeah. Trim, yeah. Flaps. Flaps. Oh, right, yeah. In fact, that will need that, actually, because... So this is, is this prop, prop pitch, yeah. So I'll have that fully forward then. Here we go. All right, so this is it then. Where are we going, folks? <laughs> My first flight using a motion rig. And wow, what a place to do it at Vario. Uh, yeah, that, no, this is a, this is a Waddington in Lincolnshire, actually. It's a, 
not far from my uh, where I live. Oh, this feels. Yeah, this is going to make me want a motion platform when I get home. That's not good. <laughs> See, I've always said that now we've got the resolution of the aero. What we need is to feel the feedback, and this is exactly what I'm feeling right now. And it just feels like this is like real flying now. It actually makes you fly better because you can feel everything. This is literally the dream, isn't it? This is the dream. A Vario Aero and a motion rig. That's what you need. I could totally be in here for hours and hours, all day, no problem at all. Everything's so nice and clear as well. Beautiful. I'm actually surprised how natural this feels. I thought it would feel quite strange, but this, with the translation between VR and how I'm feeling as well in the cockpit, it just feels so natural, like I'm actually flying. Wow, I actually feel that. I even feel when I moved up there, the bit of turbulence in the air, I felt that. This is this is the dream. This is absolutely the dream doing this. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I want to be. I want to do this every day. All right, no pressure. Then see if I can do a decent landing here. That is exceptional. That is fantastic. And we made it without crashing. <laughs> wow, that is so. Oh god, that is incredible. That is absolutely amazing. I want one. Can I have one? I want one for Christmas. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's definitely one of the perks of of working working uh, here. If I, do, if I worked here, I'd just yeah. be on that all the yeah. time. I, I'd be a, a really bad employee because I'd be like, "Where is he? Where's Steve gone? Oh, he's in the motion rig again." That's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what we're doing here <laughs> most of the day. But no, but it's 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 it really kind of adds to the kind of motion and and realism. And and we even had that kind of like. Uh, belt that that tightens yes, you up when the jeep works yeah. so um, yeah. it's funny watching that cuz yeah. i do get so giddy when i get in vr i get so I, emotional almost when yeah, i'm in yeah, vr yeah. and that's because of the it's a true genuine feeling mm, mm. and if i ever show youtube videos cuz sometimes i do very rarely out of vr i always sound a bit flat and a bit kind of like and i, I don't mean to be but there's something yeah. about vr that really encapsulates that feeling of flight yeah. but i've never tried a motion rig before that was the yeah. first time yeah and as I say, I was expecting it to be I almost overemphasized and a bit fake, but mm -hmm. it was absolutely, I've, I've been flying quite a bit this week, actually, in real life. Really? Yeah, wow. I have. And yeah. it's, in fact, it was perfect timing because yeah. going into that straight away, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's those subtle movements that mm -hmm. you feel mm -hmm. translated mm -hmm. as well as obviously, you know, being in VR, it's the missing mm -hmm. puzzle piece. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was just the that's, most incredible. That's super interesting. I, I never, you know, flown myself as a plane but but you know it's incredible that now with today's technology with the headset and the right software you know yeah. you can get as close as you can Definitely. you know without doing it real yeah. so i think that's the uh, that's one of the things why i i love working with technology and and Definitely. working with with stuff like what we're doing at vario and, and it's just like it's been amazing but about the journey so can you share a little bit more about your you know flight sim background what got you yeah, in the sure. flight sims in the vr like what was what was the journey like yeah, I mean, again, I was just like any other flight simmer out there. I just wanted the most authentic experience I possibly could get without getting a real pilot's license, of course. And um, I'm quite lucky to do some a fair bit of real world flying anyway. Mm. So it's interesting that I can compare that these days. But back in the day when I was a lot younger, it was just a case of just grabbing my hands on any technology I can, you know, or could rather, just to just get that feeling yeah. and uh I mean, i've been flying well doing flight sims even when i was at school i was i was like so geeky enough to yeah, yeah. Uh, start a flight sim right. club yeah, yeah, yeah. how it, many years ago was this that, oh well i mean i'm i'm how long ago was that it was like in the 90s anyway so yeah, yeah. you know 90s and people think i'm probably younger than i am but <laughs> i'll leave it there <laughs> but yeah and just i think it was like fs not fs5 or something really really yeah, like yeah. you know just pixelated graphics and right. triangles and things and even then that was like amazing back in the day yeah, yeah yeah you know um but i i do remember the very first time i tried vr um that to me that was a real point in mm. my uh sort of my own thirst for that you know uh, immersion 
it would change everything forever. Right. right? Literally change everything forever. But I did notice when straight was away. This, by the way, the that, first time you tried. Trying VR. to think, when was it? Because um, I just bought a VR headset, just kind of it was like on a whim, you know, just yeah, spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I've got to try this out. And I think it was it was when the it was the Oculus uh, CV1. So it was probably about a year after that got released. So it was, mm. it was a long time ago now. And I remember thinking, this experience is just absolutely it's changed my way of thinking about flying forever. Mm. And even though it was low resolution, I still would prefer to do that than flying on a massive screen like that, personally. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, situation I, I, I totally where get it. I totally get it because for me, flight sims, you know, two D screens were like, well, yeah, it's nice, it's, but yeah, it's it nothing be, it compared. Fantastic. Nothing compared to the fact no. that when you put the headset on and you no. feel like you're inside the plane. Absolutely, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. because I think, I think VR that is VR and flying together seemed to me to be a perfect combination mm. that fit really well. Yeah. Uh, because you feel the height, you feel yeah. sort of um, the speed and the, as I say, again, the situation yeah. where this is when you're in the pattern, the VFR, mm. you're looking out, outside the cockpit. I remember actually when I did some real world sort of like training, I did, I, I was going to do my PPL at one point, um, but I ran out of money like most people when they're doing something like this. Um, I kept getting told to stop looking at the instruments and looking around more. And that's something that VR does give you, you know, is that... Uh, you kind of look beyond the cockpit and your environment and then it all comes together and connects together and yeah that's yeah, i, so I cool. think that that's that's super interesting when when Vario was founded uh about more than six years ago the um the first of the use cases that we kind of envisioned for this human eye resolution capability yeah. was virtual flying and 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 sim flying flight simulation because you had to understand all the um, all the meters all the details be able to read all the meters yeah, and exactly. see in distance yeah. and and this was the thing that back in the day that just wasn't possible right so you couldn't have that and the same understand same understanding as in real life so it's been kind of part of the story of Vario, even though of course we started from the kind of professional space but kind of like having that one now for the enthusiast you know thanks to you know many incredible softwares like the flight sim is is I think it's mind blowing, and I'm I'm now really into those. So it's, really, uh, that's it's good be, to know. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> of course, like I don't have that long journey as no, you have, no, but uh, no. but I I think it's just a power that VR can have that kind of yeah. power to get people into Absolutely. into totally new things that they weren't before. But I think it's really cool to hear that you have such a long history from all yeah. the way, from pixelated like old PGA. Thing, to be honest, one. I am yeah, and I love all the flight scenes, but I think this last year or so has been yeah. real a really important shift i think there's a lot yeah. of new flight simmers out there now yeah. and there's so many different ways you can fly you don't have to be really serious and learn on the checklist you yeah. can just do it as a, a way of relaxation and stuff you know or and sometimes i do it's a way of uh, de-stressing and i think vr has that yeah. uh, ability to make you feel very present within the moment yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that can be very powerful i yeah, think yeah, yeah. you know yeah. um, and whether that just translates to just as you say flying in a beautiful scenic location VR does that, but it also helps with real world training and everything in between as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, very yeah, exactly. really cool. <laughs> but I, I, I think it's also like you said, you're re, you're flying the real planes and then flying virtual. Do you yeah. do you do, do <laughs> so that you fly the same routes or the I same? I do. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like the first thing I'm going to do when I get home is yeah. fly from Manchester to Helsinki because that's course. what we did yeah, today. Exactly. To, you know, to, to, to you need here. to do a flyby. Yes, of, I will. Our office. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and by the way, how does this all go together with your day job? Like, how do you um? Is, is there a relation to your day job? The of of this? Uh, no, thing? not yeah, really. Yeah. I, I literally, I, my my day job. I'm I'm a music therapist yeah, by yeah, day, yeah. and a flight simulator by night. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's actually a very demanding job. And I think mm -hmm. maybe that's why I love it so much because I do have a very busy sort of day job. So when I get home, yeah. I just love flying in VR. And I, I totally get it. Like I have two small kids and, and nothing yeah. is better. Like after everybody is sleeping, you're flying over Tokyo. Well, that's at least for me. But, uh, but really, I totally that's your special <laughs> VR place. Yeah, that's my place. Absolutely. I used to live there. So that's why I like uh, yeah. to go there. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Let's talk about a little bit the the aero. And, and I, I think it's really fitting that you're here because uh, some time ago at Vario, we were doing only uh, professional devices. But then voices <laughs> from the community. I know this uh, is started, so to, started to come true and 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 thanks by the way for, for all of those voices. 
and 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 keep on letting us know how we're doing how we can do better but um but it was all about like um hey the professional product that we're doing how could we and should we do a product that serves enthusiasts those people who you know really want to have the best of the best uh for the uh for the uh, for the product and we did a we did a research project on that one and um and uh and and thanks to you were part of that we did an interviews uh we showed the product concept and so on so that that was a kind of like um kind of birth of of Mario Aero as a product as a name Aero yeah it has a lot yeah. to do with the with flight sim exactly. as well uh but you know let's go back a little bit like how did you first hear about Mario yourself yeah well I think it was um one of the, your companies always been on my kind of like radar I think every flight sim is radar to think that we, we all know that you your main goal or one of the main goals is to have that most incredible uh sort of high resolution um you know that immersion that no other vr headset so far in my opinion hasn't got that far and uh, you know so I, I always knew with with your high-end devices that i always thought if there was a possible way anyway that mm. we could get our hands on this somehow and i was i, I was very very uh, privileged that when i did reach out to you guys yeah you know that you was able to i was able to loan one of the um vr3 yeah 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 and at that point, I, I didn't really know what to expect from that headset at the time, right. having, you know, used many other, you know, high resolution VR headsets, you know, because I've, I've got too many of them as it is. Or well, most of my subscribers will know I've got like mm. a just, you know, a man cave full of VR headsets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so when I tried that, I, I felt both like just absolutely uh, mind blown. I was just so incredibly amazed with that resolution, but also very sad at the same time thinking, I can see what the future is in terms of what we need for VR clarity, but we can't quite get there mm -hmm. because, of course, it's for professional, you know, users really. So I, th I just thought, why don't I just let's just shout as loud as possible mm -hmm. in the comments, you know, and just on videos to say that if there's any way that we could get this resolution, this kind of mm -hmm. clarity and quality within a consumer product, mm -hmm. a high-end sort of prosumer product. I mean, it was a long shot, but I thought. Why not? And I could not believe the response. I mean, that video got well into 100,000 views, which from, for my channel, that's huge. That's huge views for my channel very, very quickly. And people were advocating for that same thing. They really mm -hmm. wanted that to happen. And I thought, yes, we're actually pulling, at this point, we're pulling together as a community yeah. to, to, to say to you, to yeah. you guys, please, yeah. we want a headset that we're able to, you know, uh access to, to without any subscription mm. but to have that same quality that yeah. you're known for yeah and 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 you know we at Vare, we we are we are enthusiasts most of here we yeah are, we yeah. are and we follow the video yeah. we follow you you, you, you we follow you we follow thrill seeker we follow mixed yeah. reality tv we follow all these kind of media so kind of like we are really into this and 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 it the the voice really gets heard absolutely it, 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 it absolutely yeah. gets heard so and and you know <laughs> through the our discord channel and everything that kind of like gets definitely heard but how did you feel being part of the um the kind of like the research project for the vario aero you know we basically i presented a bunch of slides and propositions how, how, how did you feel about it being part of it i think the first thing was a huge uh, sense of responsibility because mm -hmm. i knew this was a big thing this yeah, was yeah, like yeah. a massive shift in perhaps not just the flight simulation genre but in the gaming uh, vr industry as well and of course for the racing community mm, mm. this was a big moment and it had to be had to be right so i i did get a few other youtubers on board as well and i want to mention yeah. these guys because they yeah. are they was a big part of this as well um the sim hanger mark from the sim hanger if you're watching this thank you for your support as well as the vr pilot amazing channel um those guys know vr as much as me if not they got more i mean together the knowledge base is incredible and you know i learn a lot from other youtubes as well and to have that amount of weight to be able to uh to sort of navigate the development of the area was so important i thought yeah um and yeah it was it was it was a great time because i felt like it was really being listened to as well you know it, it, it was all the suggestions we were making it was it's one of those things where we really felt like we was part of that um yeah. development of the aero yeah and yeah. Oh, I, I'm super proud of that. Yeah. I am super proud 
that was able to pull that one off. And, and we know. we haven't done, we haven't done anything like that before. That it was the first time we thought like, hey, let's actually you know talk with the users, take them part of the developing of this product. You know, ask them what the proposition should be, and uh, it was an exciting thing, like a new thing. Yeah, first, of, yeah. first of, of for us was as as well. But we we were super happy about the outcome and big thanks for you know being part of that and showing your passion and to everybody else, of course, you know, in the community. And making videos, we are super, super grateful of all that kind of feedback and, you know, great feedback, you know, development ideas, keep them coming because we are, we are 100%, you know, uh, kind of listening. But the interesting, I think the story for us at Vario was that it was the first time when the product, the Vario Aero came from the lab. And, you know, I was talking about how, I was thinking about how should we name it, right? Like, what's yeah, the name? I yeah. didn't want to call it the uh you know, VR, uh, <laughs> VR four or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and, and we were, I was thinking about the names and, and a big part of that name, it came from the flight sim community yeah, and, and Aero was fitting. Yeah. I, I, there's a funny story. Aero is actually the name, the, the Finnair, the flight um, uh, company of, of Finland. It was before it was called Finnair, it was called the Aero. I never knew that. Yeah, you exactly. know, guys, that was the, that's the first. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Finnair, great, great company, Aero, uh, great headset. Um, the But the, the story that I was getting to is the first time it came from the lab and and I put it on my oh, head and people yeah. here put it on the, on their head. They were like absolutely floored, like absolutely for, floored about the image quality of the comfort and all that. So I think one, out of the, you know, all the products and prototypes we've been doing, that has been one of the definite kind of wow moments for yeah. me and people oh, yeah. here putting it there in their head. How was it for you the first time you just tried it? I was like, hang on a minute. This actually looks better than the VR3. And the reason why is because obviously you cannot use that mini OLED 75 pixels per degree display in, say, Steam VR anyway. So that's really for a professional case. So when I did try the VR3, I was actually just using the peripheral display anyway, right. which is the same, I think, as the error, isn't it? It's the same. But the difference yeah. is, is that it's actually a brighter display. It's not driving those panels as well means that you get a more vivid response uh, mm -hmm. from the screen. Yeah. So my first thought was, yeah, this is actually better. And it's lighter as well, because obviously it doesn't have all those screens in. Yeah. So. I was blown away with it. And I think you could probably tell on that video because I did literally just, I would, I just, I thought, you know, I'm not going to do a really scripted video. I'm just going to show my first moments in the headset because I think that's the most genuine way I can show it off. Yeah. So as soon as I put it on, I just put the camera rolling or the video. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I was, I actually got emotional and it yeah, sounds yeah, crazy. Yeah. And I wasn't going to use that as yeah, part of the video. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I scrapped it. I yeah. thought, I'm not using that. It's too yeah. ridiculous. But then I thought, yeah, you know what? No, I'm going to use that because people, the flight sim, flight sim is VR users out there. This kind of thing is as important to them as it is for me. Hmm. They need to see that. They need to see that. They, and uh, and, yeah. and I, I, I'm the same, you know, I get, you know, super emotional when I see, you yeah. know, the latest things that 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 we are doing with our headset or the latest games or the demos. And I, I think this kind of like woking these emotions is one of the best parts of, you know, technology nowadays that Definitely. can have. Yeah. So yeah. I, you know, it's, we are lucky to live in this age. Yeah, now, with this kind we of are technology. totally, absolutely. So has that any way um, kind of changed the way that you, do flying or anything with this kind of extra kind of immersion or crap? Is it, do you do you, do you, do you kind of like recognize any changes like how you approach flying? Yeah, I fly more. Yeah, I fly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But literally, yeah. like pretty much every day, yeah. I'm in VR at some point. Right. I think, and yeah, um, and that's a great, that's, that's a crazy. great asset test because that's exactly what we're doing every yeah, day. Yeah, I know. I, I, so, yeah. It's funny because yeah. I never used to really flight simming. I used to kind of go back to it every now and then, do loads of it. And then, you know, but now I, I, I do it. It's important for me because obviously I've got this YouTube channel. So mm. I, it's important for me to sometimes just fly for myself. In fact, I probably fly more for myself than do videos. Yeah, that yeah, gives yeah. you an idea how many, how much I fly because I post a lot of videos. <laughs> but I think it's important to maintain to maintain that sort of enthusiasm and that passion for myself as well. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I think if, I think if anything... I now fly more complex aircraft now mm, because mm. I can see better. Right. Because right. that was the always, that was always the issue for me. Um, for some people, I mean, VR is a very personal thing, and sometimes it might be a wider field of view you want. But for me personally, it's always been first and foremost that clarity because it's it's linked with comfort and mm. eye fatigue and everything. Mm, mm, mm. Um, 
I don't think I've ever flown so much in VR as with the aero. I'm just trying to think my longest session was about... Yeah, how long? That's, a, that's actually really... It's actually embarrassing, this is. No, I think it's... Seven think hours it's... long, seven hours. <laughs> seven hours I've flown with seven, aero. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, yeah. I think you will get some kind of award <laughs> from Vario for that one. We will do it. With a bit of... Yeah, maybe a, a cup of tea break and then back into VR. Yeah, so yeah, not completely, yeah. but I mean, like, literally seven hours in VR. That's amazing. Uh, that's I've really never good. been able to do that before. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So thinking about it from that point of view... Okay, seven um, hours. If somebody can do better yeah, in the community, do. let us know. So <laughs> send us a video. I mean, I'll do, I'll do like a live stream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 incredible. <laughs> I think it's really great. And and I I I like I said the emotion that comes through uh, from the videos. That's I have to say it's not only about like hey yeah great we made a we made a great headset, but it's also a big inspiration for the people working at Barrio. Yeah. Like really, you know, yeah, we have that's developers. Great. We have product people, coders, designers, when they see that emotion, I would claim that, you know, that is a source of inspiration for making, you know, better products and more products. So, you know, big thank you. And it, it really Amazing. kind of makes a wow. difference. And the next clip we're going to show you is is part of these reactions. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I just love it. Love it. So let's put it to play, maybe. This is unbelievable. This is absolutely un friggin' believable. How is this even possible? Oh my goodness me. This is such a special moment. I want everybody to experience this. This is a total game changer, a sim changer. I have never seen anything like this. And to think that this headset is a consumer level headset we don't have to pay a subscription and it looks every bit as good as the vario vr3 this is an absolute revelation oh my god guys i, I actually feel emotional here i feel emotional because i know what this means not just to me but to you guys i know what this means we've wanted this for so long We've wanted this experience for so long and we've got it. <laughs> that was great. That was that was super great. And uh, it's quite weird and, watching that, but I, I haven't yeah. actually watched that since um I did I made the video. It's like, oh yeah. got to me a bit there. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, the people here looking at that video who have been like struggling with the with the diva, you know, spending long hours here, not only you know, flying, but also, you know coding and making making this happen i think for them that kind of feedback it really matters like you know yeah, it, it, yeah. it matters on a personal level and a level of like you know why you why you why we do this so you know that's that's the reason why we do this so it's 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 meaningful big thank you i think um, yeah. just as well like yeah. i think the reason another reason why it's so important mm. to me is because like God, this is your first attempt at a consumer VR headset. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not perfect. Of course it Absolutely. isn't. Absolutely. Yeah. There's areas that could be improved. And yeah. to think that this is your first device. Yeah. And it's that good. Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's happening in the future. <laughs> I really am. Exactly. Exactly. We all are. But but yeah, and and I, I think the fact that we came from the, you know, the demands that we have from this, you know. Air, air flight companies and and, yeah, and these professional companies and car designers and all that they're pretty you know the demands are pretty high bet, so yeah so that has definitely helped us but that said now they kind of like the feedback and the community uh kind of feedback that gets to us is 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 even better in yeah, a way because it, it's say, varied yeah. it's varied we get new ideas new insights so it, it's really uh, the thing is about yeah. this community is it's very passionate mm. so um i'd imagine how how does it actually I'll ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, how does it stack up in, compared to the, your professional customers? Yeah. Sort of having to now you're in the consumer space because yeah. especially for flight simmers, yeah, they are their needs are so demanding as you probably they realize are. now. They yeah, are. They are, and it's only yeah. because it's driven by passion and yeah. because they want that immersion. Yeah. How how is that? As have you it, learned it, a lot from that? Absolutely, and yeah. it's, it's really great that you ask it because it it stacks up really high. I was just in a product leadership meeting just just before I yeah, did a lot of meetings, you? <laughs> So uh and we were discussing we were discussing the feedback that comes from the community we were discussing all these kind of things and and how important they are and how do we put them in our roadmap so it is super super uh important yeah. and at the same time uh the feedback that we get from 
all these simulation companies that you know are making these rigs yeah. for you know commercial airlines to train their stuff and 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 train people who are flying uh, jet fighters and so on uh and, and and really kind of seeing how they how coherent that kind of feedback is in in many ways i think it's supremely uh inspiring and 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 really important and that's a big part of why we wanted to do product for the enthusiasts so that we can learn so that we can kind of learn from the passion from the community and 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 turn that you know into 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 a great product knowledge and i yeah. think it the feedback that we get from the community helps us to make a better professional products and the same way the feedback that gets comes from us from yeah, the sure professionals actually. Makes us make a better product for them. everyone. So, yeah. so actually both are helping each other out now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, it becomes that's a richer great. kind of context. Yeah, that totally makes sense. It makes a richer context yeah. for the whole kind of like um development. Cool. Um now let's talk about a little bit about your setup. I think that's very interesting, what kind of different kind of setups people have uh at home. So can you just briefly introduce like what what's the setup you have at the home for yeah, for sure. Flight? Well, I mean, I think I'll probably just mention, first of all, that VR is such a pig to get right. And I want to say this because I know, guys, in the comments, you're probably, you know, I'm sure every flight simmer has struggled with performance because VR is still very much in its infancy and hardware is kind of only just catching up. and it's, We've got a ways to go as well. So it's so important to, first of all, get a good sort of, you know, setup. And I'm by no means an expert at all, but it is something that is uh, quite hard to kind of get right, you know, and it's always been changed mm -hmm. and tweaked. And mm -hmm. the great thing about many Sims, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like DCS, but particularly with Microsoft Flight Simulator, mm -hmm. it's always constantly evolving. Okay. And, and re with recent tweaks and the tw recent updates, we're getting that performance now. It's starting mm -hmm. to come in, in through. But I do run quite a beastly computer because right. you have to. A yeah. lot of that is because of recording, because, uh, like, you know, when you're recording right. as well as in VR, it takes a lot of, uh, you know, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. yeah um, so which chip are you you're running? I'm running a, a 3090 at the yeah. moment, an RTX 3090. Yeah. Um, but I, I've I've, come to, I've decided, actually, yeah. that I, I'm going <laughs> to, sounds crazy, but I'm yeah. going to get two different computers. Right. I want to get a really high-end computer, uh, which is what I have now, mm. uh, but also a medium spec computer because right. i think a lot of people out there were probably more likely running probably a 20 series like a 2080 mm. or maybe a yeah. 3070 kind yeah. of gp which trust me a 3070 that actually runs out really well yeah. i was very surprised by that um so i think that way i can sort of because it would make sense for me to have something crazy powerful and then mm. recommend setup guys it's going to be fine because yeah, i'm going to have yeah. a powerful computer yeah so having both uh, a medium and high spec computer that, that, that's really cool would that's, make more sense yeah so I'm, I'm looking into that in the very near future actually excellent uh yeah right. what about the controllers like hotas what what kind of system is yeah that? nothing that incredible really yeah. i just use the um oh, honeycomb uh alpha yoke i think it's called right. a yoke. yeah uh, and yeah, before yeah. that i used to use a ch yoke yeah and that thing lasted about 15 years mm -hmm. literally it's about like every time i've moved house or something or whatever it's been thrown in the back of you know of a van or something or whatever or, right uh, you know it, because uh my desk is because i do uh, i recall bands and things as well so mm -hmm. I, like my my space is very busy and so i can just basically i need something that can click on and off so i used to use that for quite a while okay but my my setup is not top of the range at all uh right. you can spend a crazy amount of money mm, just like mm. you can on vr headsets with hardware as well right. i mean for instance that in the background yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. incredible yeah. but uh yeah i've used the same set of rudder pedals for the past what 10 years now yeah. i am probably going to upgrade uh, you know upgrade soon but I, I want people to know that you don't need the latest and greatest hardware exactly. to enjoy vr yeah. i certainly don't have that i i, I absolutely agree you know, uh i've so. been flying with the with the microsoft flight sim and you know without that one in in one of our other rooms and i just had a just had the joystick yeah and it's yeah. still like you know it's it still things the experience of course as long as you're sitting somewhere comfortably yeah. <laughs> and, and you're doing it it's... just don't use a mouse and keyboard i won't go that quite that far yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. at least get, get yourself a cheap joystick or something yeah. and you know you're, you're good to go with that exactly you know, just to get exactly. you into it yeah, yeah, yeah so what kind of flight sessions you typically have like what's what's a what's yeah. a typical typical session that you'll do well Unless I'm tearing my hair out trying to make a video, because mm -hmm. they're so hard to make in VR, really hard. Uh, you, you wouldn't believe how long it takes to make a VR video sometimes. But um, for, for my own personal use, in fact, actually, I've, we've just got back, me and my partner, Melissa, we've just got back from a 
three and a half week tour of Norway on, on nice. a motorbike. Nice. Uh, and we went right up to the Arctic Circle and back. And the first thing I did when I got home is basically plot the route and then just recreate that route in VR. Yeah. And there was many times where, and this sounds crazy, okay? I know it sounds crazy, but there's many times during my VR experience when I was flying over the same sort of place. Well, I, I even remembered the conversations we had, me and Melissa had, uh, just because I felt like I was sort of not back there as such. I knew I was obviously in VR, but it just, it, there was something that happened with my memory and that I, I recognize certain places like you do in real life. If yeah. you go somewhere, you remember certain memories. That kind of happened, but in VR, yeah. which, it was mind blowing, you yeah, know. So exactly. I do use uh, VR and flying mm. for, for touring, like you know, sightseeing mm. and recreating routes and things like that. It, it's just it's kind of like going way. back into the memory lane. I, I, yeah. I have the same thing with Tokyo as I used to live there, yeah. and I used to go there. And well, there was my place, and there was it looks so good in there yeah. because with the photogrammetry exactly. as well. Exactly. So yeah, You're kind of like you know, you have a place to teleport immediately yeah, yeah, to totally. somewhere place yeah. like just floating there yeah absolutely yeah of course there's other you know sometimes i like to be a bit more serious about it and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, learn an aircraft like right. there was a particular airliner i learned recently yeah. the just flight 146 which is yeah. a beautiful airliner and it's the, what the work that they put into that is insane yeah uh, and it, it takes it like you know print off the manual it's like this big yeah. and to work through everything mm. now before i'd be doing that in 2d mode mm. of course it gets back to that clarity again right. but now i'm able to learn where things are in the cockpit muscle memory as well as sort of knowing where things are in the cockpit you know just because of the the vr experience yeah. and the clarity mm. um it's a huge you know, really rewarding thing and every now and then i'll treat myself to a flight in an aircraft like that mm. and i'll do everything as close to uh, real life as I possibly mm. can, and then when you land, yeah. it's like and you and you've done everything right. It just yeah, feels yeah. so good. So that's the that's like a hardcore way of doing it. Yeah. But then sometimes I'll just relax and just go into it and just chill out and go for a flight with with my community members. You know, we'll yeah, often yeah, yeah. do a YouTube flight together, and that's I think fantastic need, I think too. That's a good idea. We should sometime organize. We should do a, a bar with, you know, with the barrio yeah, people. Yeah, like I think that's let's do that. Really fun. Yeah, that's got to happen. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's definitely do it. So, what are the uh, what are the fa your favorite kind of games and flight tracks and planes? Can you give a little overview of of those? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, apart from flying, like yeah. um, I did, I have now completed Half Life Alex, right? It with the arrow, yeah, and yeah, again, <laughs> oh, it's just ridiculously that's, good, isn't it? Like that's my my incredible. goodness, me, that's, that is absolutely know, it's crazy, yeah, but. I also I really love DCS. DCS yeah, 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 is really improving yeah. hugely. Um yeah. and I, there's something about the flight dynamics in DCS mm. that it really again makes you feel like a fighter pilot or something. Right. right. And they're study level aircraft and yeah. you can really learn the switches, the systems yeah. and everything. Um oh yeah, I said so many sims. In fact, I use all the sims to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, uh with the DCS, the carrier takes off. Take yes. Oh, guys, favorites. seriously, I did the takeoff in that motion rig. I don't think that was on the recording. Yeah. And any of you DCS fans out there, only F-18, and I was there, four mil, and then suddenly I <laughs> and I, I actually felt the kick yeah, yeah, yeah. going off yeah. the carrier yeah. and then back into land again. Yeah. It's I, like, how has technology got to the point where we can feel that? Exactly, exactly. It's, 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 it's one of my favorite I want things. one. I want yeah. one of them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so now the next, um, let's talk about a little bit about these kind of best tips and tricks. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, there's, sure. as we know, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim, for example, has tons of options. Oh, uh, uh, Barrio Base offers tons of options. Yes. Uh, and uh, and everybody have their own way of, of, of setting them, them up. So uh, maybe we just um, go through some of the things that you do. Of course. Yeah, and yeah, sure. some kind of learnings that you have done and, and maybe... Maybe it helps help some of you guys. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Your own Absolutely. Well. Yeah, sure. So I guess now we will change into here and look at this one here. So I'll take this one. Okay, so here, <laughs> what we are actually seeing is the... The infamous option. setting screen. <laughs> exactly, the setting screens <laughs> for the Microsoft Flight Sim. So, you know, why don't you just, you know, talk through some of the... Uh, Tips and tricks, some things that you usually fly with your with your yeah, setup. Yeah, sure. Well, the first thing that struck me right straight away was I was actually quite impressed with your settings. Yeah. Because if you notice, folks, a lot of things here 
even though you're running a really powerful computer yeah. uh, with a 3090, you've got right. things quite low. Right. And that's a good idea. And it's the most stupidest which thing. Which ones are? Which, like, what are you like, referring? It's instance here, like the buildings and trees and everything, uh, texture super sampling, and a lot of things. I mean, you've got some things on Ultra, which is fine, but yeah. mainly that is you know quite mid to low settings. Yeah. And it sounds really ridiculous saying this, but the first thing you need to do is just lower those settings, guys. Seriously, you don't mm. need to have everything on ultra because you're in vr you know if you was on a flat screen mm. then you kind of need that to compensate for the lack of immersion but right. like oh, i've played like the most simplistic games in vr but it doesn't yeah. matter about graphics because you're right. within that space right it's the same thing here yeah, yeah so yeah. just the first thing simply lower your settings whatever you're using now just lower them down yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that extra bit of frame rate will be more important than mm. A few more fluffy clouds, for instance. Right, right, know, right. Because right. it's that's, yeah. Is there anything specific here? Uh, yeah, this, you, you certain, there do? is certain things that yeah. are huge, as I call heavy hitters. Yeah. So um, one. Particularly, like, let's have a look here. Like, uh, if we go down a bit further here, uh, ambient occlusion at the moment, that's still a big one. Uh, yeah. I would, I would, rec I would definitely recommend switching that off. Yeah, right. uh, it is better now since Sim Update 10. But, right. I, but for my, you know, in the initial test, I haven't done loads of tests. Mm -mm -mm. There's definitely still quite a bit of a performance impact with right. that. Uh, also, Raymarch Reflections. I love what Acebo is doing there. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, that's going to get better and better. But right now, some of these, are, I guess, ex that have been really fully optimized. Right. Uh, in fact, in some, in some ways, I wish that it was kind of classed in it, like a different settings menu, classed yeah. experimental, because then you get more an idea of some of these yeah, settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because, you know, this sim is, is going to be around for a while and it's going to mature and get better and better. Mm, but mm. for now, guys, honestly, just, I know it's hard. I know you want to put all those settings to the right and, you know, with the latest 4090, you never know, you might be able to get a bit better. But yeah. for now, yeah, Raymarch Reflections, definitely have that off. Uh, and if you're using foveated rendering with the OpenXR toolkit, mm. which is an amazing piece of software, yeah. uh, thanks to all the members there, um, incredible bit of a kit that is an external program that allows the mm. Vari Aero to have eye tracking, uh, which is a huge deal because huge I don't really deal. know yeah. any other VR headset that has managed to do that. So yeah. with the eye tracking enabled in the OpenXR toolkit, mm. You do, it, it's not a massive performance boost because mm. it's not within the sim itself, mm. but you do get at least about five, six frames per second in yeah. VR. That's not, which is probably more like 12 frames per second. Right. Uh, you know, if you can counteract that, yeah. which is a big deal as well. Is there anything here? Uh, but it, we could spend a whole hour just doing this, but no, but yeah, I, I, I it's think fine. it's meaningful. I think, yeah, it's, absolutely. I want to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off stream yeah. train pre caching. That's yeah. a really important one. You need that on for VR, yeah. but, but you know, Maybe medium to high is enough because okay. that is a heavy hitter. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Level of detail. But this is a this is a one. This is a funny one yeah. because with the aero, I think this is regardless of the clarity in the cockpit. The thing that mm. got me about that headset the most was far away. You know, you can you, you can look past where you would in any other video headset, mm. and you can see that tree, that hillside, that mm. beach, that mountain that you never would be able to see right. because of the lack of screen door effect yeah. and those spherical lenses yeah. gives it that real clear display. Right. Trouble is, though, that means that you can see the level of detail when it drops off. But <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, which which bit, bit I, I would okay. actually recommend about 150 to 130 personally. Let's do it. It's funny because a lot of my Discord members are going to be in the chat and they know yeah, yeah. more about this than me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. No expert folks, but this is just what works but for me. I think these are the few of the things <laughs> that I, you know, I love to learn, yeah, you know, from yeah. the community. And I'm like, hey, what are, because again, for everyone, it's the you know individual things depending on gpu depending on the setup but uh but these yeah. are the things you can like spend a lot of time if you don't have a help from the company. definitely definitely yeah. this is why my channel aims really to make sure that i give you the latest best setup guides not just for high-end computers right. but for medium spec computers as well that's right. going to be a priority guys for me yeah. uh because i do appreciate i do listen to your comments and i know that sometimes it's not helpful having a setup guide from someone who's got the best computer in the world uh, <laughs> so i will be thinking about that uh next sort of you know in the next future videos this cool. one up here actually because with the Vari area you, yeah. you want the best clarity of course right. you want the best clarity yeah but for me personally i do think that there should be two different setups depending mm. on the flying you're doing this is mm. so important okay if you're flying airliners and you want the absolute best clarity yeah if we just go up here yeah stick with taa mode okay 100 percent uh on the render scale there you, you want the best right from the arrow you do yeah. absolutely 
But for those of you who like flying VFR, bush flying, you know, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. this is where Sim Update 10 has changed things because you can okay. now have deep learning super sampling, uh, which is NVIDIA's DLSS, thing, yeah. new AI tech. Yeah. So, yeah, if, if you put DLSS on, now at the moment, um, the thing is with DLSS, it's not all perfect, of course. People who want that clarity in the cockpit with glass gauges, mm -hmm. it's not quite there yet. And that mm -hmm. is a Sobo. Sobo need to do that. So if you're watching mm -hmm. this, and I bet you are watching this as Sobo, thank you for all you're doing. But please check, make sure that uh, you know that's a priority for you in the future for VR users is to have uh, better clarity in the cockpit. And what they're thinking of doing is uh, basically negating the need for DLSS. So taking that option off, so the glass panels are still in TAA, right? Whilst everything else is in DLSS. Okay. I think that's how I understand it. Yeah. Which would be a that would be game changing actually right. because DLSS is a huge benefit. Yeah. But I would recommend if you're going to use that with the mm -hmm. Aero, you go to the Vario base. Okay. Let's go to the Vario Keep, base. Yeah. Performance or yeah. balance for that. Great. This is where I would recommend, and I would never dare do this unless you're using DLSS. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. Yeah, you can. Um, either upscale to 37 pixels per degree or 39. In fact, I say if you're using a 3070, I'd recommend no more than that. But 3090 uses 39 pixels per degree with DLSS. Okay, that's mm. important. DLSS needs to be enabled. Right. That gives you really good clarity, but you also get really nice performance as right. well. With that. Yeah. Uh, and that's for people who like flying VFR. The clarity will still be great. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It'll still be way better than, you know, most things, most yeah. VR headsets out there. Uh, but that's what I'd recommend. That, that's a moment. really good, really good, really good kind yeah, of tips. Absolutely. Any other uh, from the Vario base that you... Yeah, well, yeah. personally for me, I, I have my display brightness on 75%, but okay. that's, again, that's a personal preference. Um, and if, it, you know, if you're the only one using the headset, you don't really need it to change the IPD every time. Just yeah. set it yourself. The one, that, In fact, that's something that's important. Yeah. Although, to be fair, mm. <laughs> I was about to say, get your IPD measured at the opticians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Aero gets mine exactly right anyway, yeah. so you don't need to do that. So. It's, 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 it's great. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I, I think it's one of these kind of like comfort things. That yes. You know that it's always right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And in future videos, I'm looking forward as well to talking about motion prediction as well, because that is coming to the era, of course, of course. In, in the near future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm really looking forward to yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, posting content of that on the channel. Absolutely. And then because I am a huge motion reprojection fan. Right. right. And I think for flying low, that yeah. is so important. Absolutely. And I'm so pleased it's coming yeah. really soon and to the Aero. We heard the feedback and uh, yeah. and. Yeah. And it will be no. there. <laughs> I was yeah. chatting about it for a while. So I'm yeah, pleased yeah. you're there. Yeah. Any, do you have any? Um, uh, you know, any ideas how to further make the water base better for your use? Any any kind of feedback or ideas? From a very selfish point of view, yeah. yeah. Um, and if uh, you know, Drew, actually another great YouTuber, Battle Geode, if you're watching this, yeah. um, another fantastic uh, VR fan. He, yeah. but he's one of the reasons why VR uh, came to Microsoft Flight Simulator so quick, right? Because he went over there to test it out, yeah. And he said to the de development team, yeah. "We need VR. Why is VR not here?" Yeah. So thank you for that, my friend. I know you're watching this. From Vahir but, as well. Yes, well exactly. Yeah, <laughs> totally. So the, the mirror of the right. Vario base is right. fantastic. But if yeah. there's any way of getting that full screen for us and VR YouTubers. That's a great feedback. That's would, a great We would feedback. really love that. I'd love it as yeah. well. I'd and, love it. And uh, of course, you guys as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah you can yeah, get yeah. it like that with yeah. analytics. Yeah, with the yeah. analytics window. Yeah, yeah exactly. But you still got those. I don't know mm. how you do that from a technical standpoint, but it would be great for that. To yeah, be a that, that's a really, that's a great feedback. Great feedback. I um, think another yeah. thing for me I would like to see personally mm. in the future mm. is a way of bringing in uh, windows in VR. So perhaps you have like a virtual desktop view. Mm. Uh, but you can do it but, with what it works best. Yeah, but it's, yeah. the thing is, whilst still flying, so right. say you're flying in the cockpit and you right. and you have a little little miniature window here, mm. so you can still see the virtual desktop right. rather than having to switch backwards back and, forwards. and forwards. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. But, you know, that would be quite a cool. Yeah, feature. yeah. I'd like to we see will, that. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's the only two main yeah. things that I would like to see because I think it's important that you've made this minimalist in terms mm. of its. Uh, resource resources. Right. That's another thing that surprised me. Even though, yeah. like the arrows, like fifty percent more resolution than say yeah. a reverb, yeah, it actually performs better. Yeah, like how 
an earth. Have you done that? It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <Tom>. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it's um like I said, like we we really have made these devices from the scratch up the software, the hardware, and yeah. we really started from the professional and, and this kind of like a performance. Sense. There's a lot of hard, you know, work and yeah. and 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 blood, sweat, and tears goes behind that, uh, and and that's one of the things that we are actually the most proud. That it's not only the kind of like the best visual quality, but actually the performance is, yeah. is high. So we did a uh, a lot of lot of work uh, to to make that. Maybe we can actually go back to the uh, yeah sure uh, to the uh, yeah. normal setting. But yeah. hey, big we, thanks we, no, for this. Honestly, no, I mean, and it's... hopefully this got um, helped some of you to make it. Make it As I say, these even things even are just sort of, uh, you know, these things are changing all the time and getting better all the time as well. So yeah, you know, yeah, I'll, we are. We I'll, are. I make sure that I keep three point eight software. Yeah, coming later uh, this year, and it will be great, better than ever. Um, okay, some things that I'm really curious to hear <laughs> from you a little bit about looking the future for flight simming. The future uh, like, flight what, simming. What, what what's the future and and how should they develop? How to how to you know together work on that and 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 make the future even even better for the for the passion that you have and for the passion that we share at Vario. So how do you see how, how should the VR sims develop in the future? What what is what is the what is your your um your dream come true for the Microsoft Flight Sim or My any dream. other software? What's the what's the next step? I think well, I do feel like VR has a very bright future ahead, mm. particularly for flight simulation. Anyway, mm. I really mm. do, uh, especially with you guys on board as well. Um, but there is definitely things that need to improve. Hugely, yeah. You know, it, yeah. we're still in the baby steps here. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, the big thing is performance. We, we right. need that to get better and better. And that's nothing you guys can do, apart from obviously the Vario-based software. Yeah, yeah. Um, and only, we can only wait for better hardware and better optimizations and things mm. like that. But I want to see better use of technology like eye tracking right, and uh, <clears throat> hand tracking as well. Yeah. I'd like to see that in the future as well uh, develop. And actually, I want to show you guys something at first, a very first. Now, I got very kind permission from one of the engineers at Varia who showed me something. And I don't know if you can see this on the camera. I'll just sort of show it up here like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. You can show it with the camera. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely amazing. I'm just going to show you this. Can you see that there? There's a little switch here, okay? And what this does is, I love that, I love this so much. I might actually take it home by accident, I'm joking. All right, so we uh, put it around our leg like this. And what this does is this is just one little sort of switch. It's actually a, uh, you can move it left, right, up and down, and it's a rotary knob as well with two buttons. And what this means is you never need to use the mouse ever again when you're in flying. Because one thing I, f I find quite difficult is the fact that, you know, to replicate the mouse or have something better than just a mouse cursor is quite hard, isn't it, in VR, especially yeah. when you've got loads of dials. But with this, I tried this in DCS, and I'm going to get, I'm going to show you a video of this in action on the channel when I get back, is with the uh, Varia Aero's eye tracking in DCS, I was able to look around, change all the MFDs, uh, all the you know, the autopilot, all the comms frequencies, just by looking where I want to go and then changing it with this. Um, a, such a simple thing. Um, I think it's probably the next best thing to, to hand tracking. Hand tracking is, is the ultimate thing I want to see, where you're just using your hands to manipulate. But this is brilliant because that means that, especially for motion platform users and things as well, yeah. you can basically look around the cockpit and this dial will see exactly where you need to be. Uh, and, you know, it just makes mm. things so much easier. It's great that you brought it up. So we are doing these kind of prototypes here in our labs uh, every now and then yeah, uh, yeah. to explore yeah, yeah. like what is the future of interaction, uh, how to use the Quite eye tracking now. in the yeah. most optimal way. And, and that's definitely one thing. And, and I think what I, what I love there is the tactile feedback. Yes, right? so, you can really feel that. that yeah, switch. exactly. Yeah, so exactly. the idea is that you look at the switch, there's a kind of like uh, focus goes to the switch and then you just turn it around. It's, so it's, it's brilliant. It's, it's absolutely it's a, brilliant. It's a bit like a, a bit like a magic. So it's um and there, there was a little yeah. demo that I tried mm. where I had loads of boxes in front mm. of me. And he said, like, try and get rid of the boxes just by using your eyes. Yeah. And that's where I realized the eye the eye tracking on the mm. Vario is incredible. It's so fast. So you would be using if it would be part of the the flight sim experience, this one. That for me is an instant 
I would, I would use that for every flight. Is right. there's, there's some things that happen in the V industry or hardware. You know, you know what I mean here. Anyone in the chat, where you use it once and you wonder how you've managed to not use it before. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. this is it now. I'm going to use this all the time. I, I that's think, brilliant. Yeah, I think that's one of those things you need to kind of like experience. Yeah. If you would, if we would have told you about it, it would be like mm, yeah, because. That's I hate it. using yeah, the yeah. mouse. It, you know, you're in a cockpit and everything, and then you've got to use the mouse to kind of control things. Um, or you can use controllers, which mm. I kind of like doing that. But with that, it's just strapped to your leg. It's always going to be on your leg. You know, you're always going to know where it is. And yeah, you yeah. just move around with your eyes. Right. And then just change things around. I think yeah, it's great. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any other particular highlights that you are looking forward from the software or hardware or any? any yeah, I just, I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys are working on in the future because... Yeah. VR is still, it can, for some people, be quite cumbersome, quite heavy, mm. uh, quite a difficult uh, niche to get into. I want right. it to be easier to access and yeah. access so more people can get into VR. I mean, right. every time we have these surveys in the flight sim world, and uh, every time these come out, more and more VR users are appearing. Like, we're now up to about yeah. 15, 15 percent, or and that's, 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 you know, of the, all, the whole sort of community right. are using VR now. Right. And that's going to grow and grow. So mm. we, we need to you know make vr more accessible i think yes. it will get there it will get there it will get there Absolutely. and i totally agree this kind of like democratizing this making it more accessible is, is you know it's part of like you know all the companies that are working in this in this in this area want to do it yeah. from their own angles and from barrio it's always been like the ultimate highest immersion and you know no trade-offs on the product on the clarity and 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 many other companies make make different kind of trade-offs then absolutely yeah. but, but you know that's that has been kind of the leading thought with Vario from the beginning that you know no sacrifices on the visual clarity and um and and that has gotten here so but anyway you know i feel that this is a big part of the same community uh different companies working on a different angle so um, i will put you on the spot with one thing absolutely yeah because uh i get asked this all the time yeah another future i would like to see yeah is better compatibility with different GPUs. Right. Now, that's something right. that not only you, a lot of right. manufacturers are struggling with that in VR. Yeah. Do you think there's any way in the future? I mean, if you don't have to answer this now, but is yeah, it yeah. something you are aware of at least? Yeah. Um, could we have better compatibility with AMD in the future? Do you think? Right. right. You know? um, at the moment, we are we are focusing on the NVIDIA. Yeah. NVIDIA it makes because that is the better GPU, in my yeah. opinion. But you know, yeah. I know there's a lot of AMD users out there. Yeah. Uh, and it would be great. In the future, at some point, whether that is something you could consider, because I know that a lot of people use AMD as well. I mean, like we've been we've been hearing that, and uh, and the the way that we see it, we have a very you know good close collaboration with Nvidia, um, and um, and and we have talked a lot. We have collaborated from the very beginning, yeah, uh, yeah. of of Varian, and 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 like I said, at the moment we are we are we are like, on the train, yeah, and, cool. and 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 um, and that's that's how we how we feel kind of like confident yeah cool yeah yeah like i say I, personally my my own personal opinion is that um nvidia are rocking it for vr anyway mm, mm. um when i have tried amd systems i've always been a bit underwhelmed but i am looking forward to seeing what they can do in the future i do think it would just broaden your audience more if we're able to get them on board as well but uh who knows what will happen in the future you never know <laughs> Good. Uh, that was a that was a really 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 good question. Uh, yeah, by the way, it was a difficult and, one, but I just no, had to get I, that in there. Uh, no, it was a, it was a good question and, and a question that we that we get a lot. And uh, and the the answer is that you know uh, at the moment the Nvidia GPUs are way to go. Uh, it is the better GPU. Yeah, let's be honest. <laughs> but you know, yeah. I had to ask. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Cool. Maybe we should go now into the Q and A. So there's a lot oh, of cool, yeah. interesting Q and A's um, that uh, are coming through through the chat. Thank you for those. Uh, maybe there's a tablet for me. But also, if you have any questions about anything, you know, yeah, that sure. you know, I'll have a from yeah, the community. I'll, I'll uh, definitely have a think. That was the main question. Uh, yeah, that was yeah, there, yeah. But, but I'll, I'll take. Think. Uh, you, you can think about it, and uh, I'll take a few here. So from your YouTube channel, I think comes a question question that is that the full six DOF motion unit back there no it's a three DOF so what it cannot do it it cannot like rotate like sideways so it's three DOF but it's pretty amazing uh, as it is. you don't you don't really miss that uh, yeah yeah, mm, yeah yeah it's amazing yeah cool um Steve tell him to send me one arrow and I look after the dogs for a <laughs> week and <laughs> Oh, do you know what I'll think about it <laughs> <laughs> one um brilliant 
Great. And there was this uh, question about the emotion reprojection. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm obviously we've, we've mentioned it before. Yeah. But, but, but I really am looking forward to yeah. seeing that. And guys, I'm hopefully going to have a demo of that tomorrow and uh, I'll be able to make a video of that and I'll put it on my channel as soon as I can and give you my sort of thoughts on that. But, yeah. you know, it's something yeah. that the, I know you are prioritizing now. So, yeah, exactly. I've like shouted I about said, it long enough. Like I said, I was, <laughs> I was just in, um, in our product leadership team meeting and, and we talked about the importance of motion reprojection, yeah. that feedback coming from the community. And I, I'm, I'm really happy to say that in the 3.8, there will be, there will be that. So are, that, that. That is now in the coming. That is in the making. Thanks to the great feedback that you guys are, are, really, are, are really looking are, are doing. Doing So you know, because of again the strong, great feedback of you and our engineers, kind of working on it. That is that is something that is uh, that is coming. I can't wait for that one. Can't wait for everyone to to try it out. So um, so really really. That will mean, guys, you might not need that expensive GPU after all. You know, let's let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what are your recommendations to get 60 FPS with Mario on IL2 with a good 3090 rig? IL2 is really good in VR with the uh, Aero. And I find of all the flight sims, IL2 is the best for performance anyway. Um, so yeah, maybe I haven't really done a setup guide for IL2 ever. So maybe I'll I'll have a think about that one and 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 maybe make a video on that in the future because uh, it's a good question but it's not something I can specifically say this this and this in terms of settings but you can get sixty frames per second easily in IL two if you're just very mindful of it so I know I can do it so once I figure out how I'll let you know in an upcoming video I promise I'll do that one because I get asked excellent. that a lot. <laughs> Question from a Roman Nudo from your YouTube channel. When will Vario products be more affordable? Um, that's a great question. The way that, again, like, like spoken, we, we think about this, like our way of approaching, Mario's way of, of approaching is that we want to make the absolutely best product that there is and, um, and, um, and then work from that one. And, and Aero was one of, the, one of those products and yes, it's a little bit more expensive than some others in the marketplace, but it also comes with uh, with some things that some others don't have. Um, so that's the way that we look at it. And also, I think big part of that value is the future proofness of the product that oh, we yeah. do. So uh, it is it is something that you will <laughs> you can rely on being the best for 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 many more kind of years to come so um yeah. build, is, build quality is astonishing yeah. i have all the vr headsets under the sun and the quality the yeah. build quality is exceptional yeah. Yeah. of course but uh but yeah of course you know everything could be cheaper right? of course yeah we would love <laughs> yeah. and i'm sure as you know technology improves these things will come down in price but when you're on the cutting edge of what's possible particularly in the consumer space as well yeah. um you know, you, you do have to pay for that quality, unfortunately. It's just yeah. one of those things. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out in the future as well as as technology gets easier to access as well. Yeah. yeah. So Seam Hanger flight simulation, how close is Mario working with Ultraleap and what are the development plans for the future? Yes, very close uh, with Ultraleap. Cool. Maybe, you know, tried it with the XR tree, the hand tracking with the VR tree. It's the best. It's the, the, the best in the industry and we are super super happy about it and uh, and yeah it would be great to have a hand tracking in in one of these kind of flight flight simulators as well um but um but that is not yet at least something that i've i've, I've seen at least here so um but yeah ultra leap great company we are super happy with working with them um uh from your youtube channel hans Kron, is this motion system custom built or does vario sell it as a kit unfortunately we don't sell it it was custom built by a great i've already asked that one <laughs> great maker in lahti region in finland um it's um it's it's pretty special it's, it's it is one, one of a kind um same one where can i buy this motion contraption i can give you the details of that guy maybe he could do another one i'm not sure of the price um uh, what will follow the Mario Aero for us flight simmers, we are always looking for the next big VR thing, anything in the planning stage. Like all companies, we are planning all kind of cool things, but nothing to uh, 
to talk about today. Um, Barrio, have you given Steve a taste of Karelian stew? Oh, I think you have <laughs> yet, a, but we are. It's, um, it's there is a still traditional time. food. There is still Pekin. time. <laughs> there is still time, exactly. Um, is Barrio looking for a larger field of view? What are the implications for performance and headset comfort when increasing the field of view? That's a good question. It's a great question. Nice. Uh, you know, again, um, part of this absolute image quality and immersion is field of view right it's 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 a super super big thing of 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 that one there are headsets that you know have two displays like this they're huge and uh give you a better field of view and at the same time they do um you know sacrifice the the image quality so uh we are not ready to make that make that kind of like um like a trade off but of course, like I said, you know, when this technology goes forward, larger field of view is definitely one 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 thing that we are looking after because again, it improves the immersion. But the field of view should not come with a price of sacrificing the image quality in the middle or in the periphery. Yeah, totally that's the heart. That. That's 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 a true kind of like uh, uh, kind of like goal to go after, uh, and 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 that's where the hardest problems do lie. Okay. Uh, when can pass-through headset be expected for the consumers? Great, great question. Um, nothing to announce today, I guess, <laughs> is, the right, is the right question. But ultimately, what do you think as, a, as an enthusiast? You know, do you think a pass-through, what, what's Actually, the kind of like the, the, the value prop for you would be as a, for a pass-through? Great question. Yeah. In fact, this is probably related as well to the future of VR. Mm. I, I really do want to see a point where uh vr and you know, you know augmented reality and vr come together seamlessly yeah. like they do with the xr uh v3 which i'm yeah. looking forward to trying next to tomorrow as well it's another video i'm going to make uh, the huge deal here for flight sim is is that we we do need to see our hardware you know whether we have a bespoke set of flight controls or whether we've got you know, maps and charts that we need uh so i know the xr3 can do that but obviously that's high end but yeah, yeah. as time goes on I'm really hoping that again the technology comes down to a point where it's more accessible. Mm -hmm. So we're able to reach out and have things in VR around us that come into that virtual space. Yeah. Um, and for flying, I think that's actually a huge part of, of something you know, that we, we really need uh, mm. moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so much important for, but even like race sims, so you can have your own race wheel yeah, yeah, yeah. in the environment, you yeah. know. Yeah, that would be really cool. So. It is, and and it's part of like the professional simulate simulators that we kind of like provide our technologies, and 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 the most immersion comes that you can actually see your hands and operate with the real yeah re real kind of like. I'm uh, looking forward to trying. That. I haven't tried that. Out yeah, yet, but, exactly. Uh, yeah, so cool. you know, and and you know, when times, I do believe that when when things go forward, these things that are now in the professional space, they do trickle down. Yeah, definitely. eventually. Yeah, when nobody knows, but eventually. Um, cool. You, yeah, I'll, I'll just have a question top yeah. of my head. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, you know, outside in tracking is the best form of tracking, isn't it? Particularly for motion simulators as well. That's the most. And, yeah. Um, I must admit, I'm a huge fan of uh, outside in tracking because mm. it's it's just very accurate. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do you think there might be a time in the future where you might look at sort of inside out tracking as a solution, just to bring the cost down as well for headsets? Yeah, you know? I, I think this, uh, when we started with Barrio is that we kind of like wanted to, again, just like you said, focus on the quality, yeah. the best tracking quality yeah. with the base stations. And and many of the uh, customers that we have, have already kind of like, had already purchased those base stations. So it just kind of like made sense uh, to have it. In the uh, in the XR3, we have a kind of like a, a beta level inside out tracking um, yes. that is in there, and we are collecting feedback from uh, from customers all over. How does it work, and 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 so on. Um, but uh, but you know, ultimately, ultimately, again, what I do believe, ultimately, you know, inside out tracking will will be the will be uh, a norm. Ultimately, yeah. yeah when does yeah. it happen? That's a different question. But but that is the ultimate direction. That we need to go Great need stuff. to go forward um cool um lots of questions nice one guys keep them coming yeah. <laughs> urho kontor here great okay headsets ah. get even better <laughs> but what's the next frontier in simulations oh that's, 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 that's a good question hey, for me oh. i like that yeah what's the next frontier okay. in flight yeah. well i mean we we, we are 
at a point where like wow with microsoft flight Simulator, it's it's a, already a point where i never expected to be able to fly around the world and you know, like literally have incredible detail um so that does excite me greatly and i, I think the whole progress of uh you know asobo's giant you know sim that they've made is going to be exciting because it's going to be you know a 10-year project so i'm looking forward to seeing where that goes really um but yeah i think that that sort of better performance in vr is something that is so important but in terms of sort of what i want to see in the future i just want to see a sobo and, and all of the i don't just want to call them out lots of other flights uh develop flights and developers take vr more seriously than they already are because it really is the future for flying mm. um there's no doubt about it and I think more people need to realize that and uh, sort of get on board with that. And so flight sims can be predominantly VR first, 2D second, rather than the other way around at the mm. moment. Yeah. Because that makes no sense to me. And it doesn't matter uh, what sort of VR headset you have. I think once you've tried it, it's incredible. <laughs> it really is. So yeah. that's what I want to see better VR optimizations and performance mm. right. uh, as a general thing, really. Right. Because I think we're already there in terms of the quality of the graphics and things. and and the systems, you know, we're, we're it's incredible what we have now. We've got DCS, we've got X Plane, we've got ILT, we've got obviously, you know, MSFS. We've got a whole range of sims. And I don't think there should be one sim to rule them all because we need, like in the VR community mm. and the VR development, we need all players to be moving the game on and pushing each other as much as possible. Right. So I think it's the same thing applies really. Totally agree. Simming. Totally agree. Um... There's a question from YouTube, Ibrax, to VR flight sim guy. What about glasses? Do you have, should you, can you wear glasses inside the headset? What's your... Do you know, I'm so rubbish at this because that's one thing I never test because I don't wear glasses. Yeah. Neither does my family or my partner or my dogs. <laughs> so literally, like, no one wears glasses in my house. But uh, but I presume you can wear glasses with the air, right? I, I do. I oh, do. yeah, so, well, there you are. And, and big part but, of our headsets have been from the beginning that that they can be worn with the glasses i i do need glasses with the vr incredible uh but i but i do and i use them and, and they're comfortable so you can do be, it be fair though i mean obviously if you, i would highly recommend lens inserts and i do have a variety of different uh sort of reviews on my channel yeah. of different lens insert providers yeah. because i think that's one thing i do want to mention actually because the lenses of a vr headset are so important even for me, I don't wear glasses, but I do still have lens inserts, plain ones right. they're called with non-prescription lens, right. just to protect your lenses, you know, yeah. uh, and maybe like say I have a blue light filter on it as well sort of yeah. thing. But yeah, you can, obviously, the best way to do it is to have a bespoke prescription lens and then they go over the lenses and then you never have to wear glasses in VR ever anymore. Yeah. So that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, question, Edward S. I'm quite happy with the arrow. Great. We are very happy to hear it. Hear. What about the issue related to RTX 4090? Yes, the RTX 4090 is in our labs. Uh, there was a great picture in our Discord, and it's being worked as we speak. So, yes, we will, you know, make it work. Uh, don't worry. Um, uh, can you wear glasses? Yeah. Um, is Vario happy with his, uh, Nicolas, is Vario happy with venture in the consumer markets? In other words, will Vario be in the consumer market for the for foreseeable future? We are very happy with the, with the consumer and especially the enthusiast prosumer market where you know, there's a need for this absolute immersion, highest yeah. level of immersion. And I think one of the testam testaments that we are happy is that we are here together uh, today all, yeah. and, and, and we continue to be uh, continue to be definitely interested in in that market. We have learned so much, and it's so passionate and interesting, and and it helps us to develop better technology and better products. So, uh, and one thing I didn't yeah. expect because now I've been in, you know, I'm here in your office. I've met all your staff, and I never knew how many of them were absolute flight sim fans like me. Mm. I, I, you know, you, you don't realize until you meet everyone that. Um, they are as enthusiastic about flight simming and do it in their spare time as much as I do. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool to know. So. Exactly. <laughs> uh, hey, for a flight sim guy, what's the most enjoy enjoyable scenic flight route? Oh, there's many of them out there. Ooh, I would recommend probably the best one I've done recently is uh, probably 
Lofoten Islands or Lofoten Islands, however you want to pronounce it, in Norway, they have really nailed the sort of peaks of the mountains there. So grab yourself uh, sort of a little bush plane or something and just sit back and enjoy that incredible landscape. Either that or perhaps Innsbruck in Austria. That's somewhere I like to go. If I've just got a half an hour and I just want to relax, fly out of Innsbruck. The mountains there are absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, it's just such a great way to sort of chill out, relax and just enjoy the view, really. So and we're so lucky to be able to do that these days, you know. Absolutely. Um, I think we are now at the end of this session. And um, there's a lot of questions that we didn't have time to answer. We will be answering them in Discord later. Um, so big thank you for everything. Is there anything else we should address? Because then all cool, Ida. Okay, so big thank you for everybody who were part of this one. And of course, most of all, Steve, big thank oh, you, man, for pleasure. being here for Absolute this session. Pleasure. Uh, you know. um, this was an absolute pleasure for us. And uh, and I think that, you know, the call out just like, you know, let's go keep on doing better job uh, yeah. and keep on giving us a great feedback, great questions through Discord. Join our Discord if you, if you haven't been there. Uh, it's a place where the community meets, where we hear all the great kind of suggestions and ideas and feedback. And, uh, and like I said, we are super committed to that one and making a better products in the future. And, and, uh, and just, you know, being being part of the community. So uh, big thanks. And uh, I guess nothing else than just see you next time on the next webinar, next community session. By the way, give us an idea. What would be ideas on what would be a great next community session, a topic or something we are super happy to, happy to do. Great. Any final thoughts? Just thank you for entering the consumer space. You know, it was something that I'm very proud that I was a part of and I was able to voice that movement. And I think from this point onwards, it's just going to get better and better. So yeah, it's all good. Um, and thank you for allowing me to come here and chat to you guys. I mean, it's just amazing. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. Now we will continue our other kind of program, maybe with uh, with the dinner and, and drinks. But thank you, everybody. Catch you on the next one. Take Peace care. out. Keep all on best. immersing. <laughs>